A phase diagram is a graphical representation of the different phases of a substance which exist at different temperatures and pressures. So overall, it allows us to determine what's the expected phase of a substance if I was given a temperature or a pressure. In this discussion, we're only going to talk about three major phases, solid, liquid, and gas. And on the phase diagram, the temperature is on the x-axis and the pressure is on the y-axis. The units are, are variable, but just as long as they're units of temperature and units of pressure. The phase diagram, in uh, the basic sense, will be broken into three different regions. These three different regions um, correspond to the three different major phases that we have. On the phase diagram, uh, some of these uh, regions make sense. So if I have a low pressure and a high temperature, I expect a gaseous phase. So this makes, makes sense in that if I heat something up, it tends to turn into a gas. Also, if I put it under low pressure, like in a vacuum, it will tend to turn into a gas. Likewise, if I have a high pressure and a low temperature, I tend to make a solid. So if you, know, if you cool things down, then things tend to freeze and they tend to form a solid. And in between these two is when I have a high pressure and a high temperature, typically we will have a liquid as the phase. So here is a typical phase diagram. It's not for any particular substance. But what you're going to see is uh, from the left-hand corner, uh, a line is going to come up and it's going to split into a Y. The way I like to remember it is that the liquid phase is inside of the, the uh, middle part of the Y. The solid is going to be to the left and gas is going to be to the right. So this kind of makes uh, sense compared to what we were just talking about. At a high temperature and a low pressure, we have a gaseous phase. At a low temperature and a high pressure, we have the solid phase, and then in between is the liquid phase. The lines in this phase diagram correspond to the conversion of one phase into another. So as we cross this line, we will be converting from the solid phase into the liquid phase. And each one of these lines, so there's three of them, this uh, one, two, and three, each one of these have a specific name, and it corresponds to the type of phase change that we are undergoing. So these are called the sublimation, fusion, and vaporization line. So as we go from the solid to the gaseous phase, this is called the sublimation line. As we go from the solid to the liquid phase, this is called the fusion line. And as we go from the liquid phase to the gas phase, this is called the vaporization line. So there's three different lines in a basic phase diagram. Now we're going to talk about some other points that are important on a phase diagram. In addition to the three main phases, we also tend to include a supercritical fluid type phase. A supercritical fluid is an ambiguous phase that has properties of liquids and gases. So it's a sort of confused in that it has properties of both. A given substance is in its supercritical state when the applied pressure is greater than what's called the critical pressure and the applied temperature is greater than the critical temperature. So the critical pressure and the critical temperature are both a constant for a given substance. And we need to be higher than both of those in order to be in a supercritical fluid state. So both of these together create what's called the critical point. And the critical point is pretty easy to find because it's at the end of the vaporization line. So you will see that the vaporization line actually stops because above and uh, to the right of that, we no longer have a separation between liquids and gases. What we have is a supercritical fluid. The triple point is where all three of our uh, phase change lines converge. So the sublimation, fusion, and vaporization lines can converge together. So it's the central point on a phase diagram. And what a triple point means is that at a specific uh, pressure and a specific temperature, all three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, can exi exist at exactly the same time. Previously, we had defined the idea of normal pressure as being one ATM. And one of the other things that we're going to be interested in finding is the normal boiling point, normal freezing point, or nor normal sublimation point. 
And these are the temperatures where we make these phase um, transitions or we cross the actual phase line inside of a phase diagram, all of which at one atmosphere. And so the idea is we can't have all three and we'll see this a little bit better in a second. So typically you have either a normal boiling point and a normal freezing point or a normal sublimation point. So uh, you really can't have all three of these because the way a phase diagram is set up. So when we look at a typical phase diagram, we can find these points pretty easy um, if we know what we're looking for. So the critical point is at the end of the vaporization line. The vaporization line is uh, the line that separates the liquid phase and the gas phase. So this is our critical point above and to the right of this we are getting into uh, a supercritical fluid state so if we track from this point to the left we're going to get to the critical pressure and if we start at this point and go down we will get to the critical temperature another point that is of interest is the triple point that's where um, all three of our lines converge together so um, that's where the kind of the typically the center of the phase diagram. If we track uh, across to the left, we get the triple point pressure. If we go down, we get the triple point temperature. <clears throat> to find the normal freezing point <clears throat> and the normal boiling point, you find one atmosphere on the y axis and then you track a, across when we. Um, when we cross the fusion line, that is where our normal freezing point is going to be. So if we track down where we cross the x-axis is going to be our normal freezing point. And if we keep going when we uh, uh, hit the vaporization line, that's where our normal boiling point is going to be. So if we drop down, we read uh, the number on the x-axis, that's going to be our normal freezing point. So you notice we can't have a normal sublimation point because um, we do not cross the uh, sublimation line at, the, uh, at one atmosphere. So now let's look at a couple of typical examples and we're going to see um, how do we actually find these numbers. Here's the phase diagram for water and you can see we're going to have the solid, liquid, and gaseous phases. Triple point is going to be where the three uh, curves meet, and the critical point is going to be at the end. In this particular example, we're going to be looking at the normal freezing point and the normal boiling point. So at one ATM, we're interested at where we cross the um, fusion line. And in that case, if we look at the temperature, that's going to be at zero degrees C. And when we cross the vaporization line, that's going to be at 100 degrees C. So we find one ATM on our y-axis, we track across and wherever we uh, cross these lines, we look down and wherever that uh, crosses the x-axis, that's going to be the numbers that we're interested in. When we look at the phase diagram for CO2, uh, it looks pretty much the same, but uh, things are going to be a little bit shifted. Here we're going to find uh, the critical pressure and temperature. So remember the critical point is at the end of the vaporization line. If we track to the left where it crosses the y-axis, that's going to be uh, 72.9 atm. If we drop down until we cross the x-axis, that's negative 31 degrees C. The triple point is where the three um, lines converge. If we track to the left, that's uh, 5.1 atm. If we drop down, negative 56.7 degrees C. In this phase diagram, when we look at one atmosphere and we track across to the right, we can see that we actually um, cross the sublimation line. So there is no normal freezing point or normal boiling point for CO2. What you have is a normal sublimation point. So that occurs at negative 78.5 degrees C. So if you have ever had a chunk of solid um, dry ice or CO2, you can see it doesn't melt. It actually goes straight from a solid into a gaseous phase, and that's because at one atmosphere, it sublimes. So here is a typical example of a question that you might get on an exam that involves a phase diagram. So typically they will give you a phase diagram, 
and they will ask you one of several questions. So here we're asking uh, for you to uh, label each region with its phase, find the critical point pressure, find the critical point temperature, um, find the normal freezing point, uh, label the vaporization curve. Um, then at the given point A, say what phase it will be at, and then if we are at that point um, A and we increase the pressure, what will be the new phase as we do this. So take a second and see if you can figure these out on your own and we will go over the answers. So here is kind of the answers and we will talk about how we got to each one of those. So the first answer is label each region with the proper phase. So I just remember that in a typical phase diagram it's shaped like a Y and it goes solid liquid gas. Then it asks, find the triple point pressure. So we find the triple point, that is where the three lines converge. I then, I'm specifically asking for the pressure, so I track left, and if it's not exactly on a point, you kind of estimate it. So it's kind of roughly between 0.5 and 1 ATM, so I'm calling it 0.75 um, atmospheres. Now we're gonna find the critical temperature. So remember the critical point is at the end of the vaporization curve. I want the temperature, so I track down until that crosses the x-axis, and I read whatever temperature is there, so that's about 150 degrees C. Then it asks for the normal freezing point. So normal means we're looking at 1 ATM. I find my um, one atmosphere, I track to the left, and because we're talking about the normal freezing point, I want to know when we make the transition between a solid and a liquid, so right here. And then I track down and then I estimate the temperature. So I'm calling that, I don't know, about uh, five degrees C. The next one is to label the vaporization curve. So uh, the vaporization curve is in between the liquid phase and the gas phase. So this is our vaporization curve. I then ask what phase would be at point A. So point A is in the region of uh, the gas state. So I would say um, that the phase is a gas. And the next question would be, what would be the new phase if the pressure at point A was increased? So if we start at A, and if we increase the pressure, that means we are going up. So if we're at A and we increase the pressure, we will go and enter the liquid phase.